Hey guys, today is uh, March the 15th of 2022 and uh, I wanted to do a quick update on CCJ. I am uh, traveling, so I'm working on my laptop, so the supercomputer I use at home uh, is not available, so the audio is not going to probably be the best, but I work with what I have, so just bear with me until I get back home. Uh, I'll be doing some quick updates here so let's get into it I'm working on CCJ and I wanted to show you uh, the latest price action so far what I'm noticing is that we have a double top uh, which is not too concerning but you know if it's going to be strong uh, it would it should reflect you know making a new high uh, but we have a fail new high and a double top so that's not a good thing there is some support down here and some some support somewhere around here but I just wanted to show you uh, is this the top and then we're gonna crash down no we don't know yet I'm just showing you some things in this video that you know could lead the probability that maybe it's getting very toppy here uh, and if it's not here it could probably be in April because there's a technique I use squaring out uh, that has an important date on uh, April 20th but I posted on my Twitter account uh, to watch out for uh, March of 14 back in in February I let my subscribers know uh, it's gonna be interesting I didn't know it was gonna be a top or a bottom I just knew that it was an important date to uh, keep on your radar and the uh, 14 came and you can see we kinda consolidated here and then on the 14 was that flush um, so that's that. Let's uh, let me show you what I what I wanted to show you is looking at seasonalities on CCJ. Uh, you can see that down here we're using five years. You can see that March is very toppy. April a little bit. It's still toppy. So it could, you know we could probably make a new high in April. But March is normally very toppy, uh, and then it kind of dwindles down. Uh, you can see that is percentages of months in which CCJ closed higher than it opened. And this is from 2018 to 2022. If you go add 10 years to that, uh, from 2013 to 2022, you can see that March still is the dominant, you know, uh, one here. April goes a little lower before the 50%, so it kind of closes lower. And you know, May, June is the weakest. June and July. Uh, if we go back five years again, you can see that. June and July is kind of flat. There's nothing in July, but June, you know, May, June is flat. But 10 years, you can see that it's more on the weaker side. You go 15 years, and it kind of, it's kind of more flat. April, February was a little more stronger. April's flat, and then June is a little weaker, and July, May around there. If you go 20 years, you can see it kind of gets flat but June and July is still more on the weaker side so that's something to keep in the back of your mind just uh, just to know that you know looking at March it could be very toppy where we at right now and that's why maybe it's reflecting that we can um, we're having a tough time right here in this zone there's a lot of things also here that you know I, I probably won't be able to cover I just wanted to show you that this this is an interesting area right here where we're having a tough time trying to get up. Some of my programs that I use that I probably need to install here on my laptop and maybe you know update it a little more. Suppose this is a wave five A B C correction, and we were supposed to push higher. And some and, and my and, and it also says that maybe this is a wave four. We had an A B C correction, and then now we're going to push into a wave five. So it depends, you know, if you use Elliott weight theory, how it's going to plan out. If this is your wave five, and this is your correction uh, that played out, and we have now a failed new high, so now we're kind of like in the unknown. So is this a wave five? Are we working on a wave five here? Uh, and then on top of knowing that in March it gets very toppy, uh, double top, you know, we're failing right here. So you know, those are the little things you got to, you know, stay vigilant. You know, don't be persuaded. You know, by 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 uh, by the news and the media and all that. 
just follow the chart I always say price is king price is king it's the leader it's going to do what's going to do everything else falls right behind it uh, 50 percent uh, 50 SMA very important it's above it so that's good that's the line in the sand you could use the 50 or the 100 uh, it's going to fluctuate around there or the 200 so far we're trending higher but we're having a tough time here the solar cycles you can see uh, that we topped out here we bought them out in April uh, March sorry March 28th and then it tops out May uh, 8th something I'm watching um, spectrum analysis I picked three cycles that were important using a nine-year uh, price action and you can see that that's what it's uh, showing and if you make a composite of those three cycles this is what is uh, forecasting that maybe we could pull back which lines up with the seasonality of what I show you in stock chart and that it could pull back possibly into you know April May around there uh, and you know June and July especially June is very you know very uh, uh, bearish or just very low price action low closings in price action so somewhere around here you know and it's not going to actually be exact here to May it could probably push into June but you know it's just it's just kind of give you an indication with these cycles the harmonic box uh, is showing also uh, April 13 right here and we'll look at the seasonality on this program and let's uh well, let's break this down uh, let's see so right now what you are seeing right here this is price action from 10 years ago uh, 10 years ago chemical topped out in February and then it pulls back into April then it gets a pop into May and then it looks like it bottoms out maybe uh, to June which pretty much shows the seasonality of what happens you know from May to June you had the annual cycle kinda almost like the solar cycle bottoms out in uh, last week of March tops out in May and then it goes down to June the annual and decimal cycle already topped out in March uh, pushes down in April pop in May and then goes down to uh, somewhere around June last week of May so you can see that you know it just fluctuates back and forth but then it finds a swing low and so far everything is confirming that you know May June uh, could possibly be maybe a potential low if it pushes lower you know so we just gotta be mindful levels you want to watch you see this trend line right here if it pushes low uh, at 22 make sure you just you know if we get all the way down here that this trend line is whole looking like a little triangle pattern um, advanced support you can see this 2458 tell my subscribers to put your stop around 20 was it 23 60 61 uh, you could probably put it around 2055 around there but if it takes anything from 2360 to 2458 uh, I know I'm gonna get stopped out and if it pushes lower I'm gonna lock in profits because I I got in um, on the 28th I, don't know, I can't remember was it 1860s I can't remember the price I got in. it was 18 something uh, but <clears throat> I'm gonna get stopped out but at least I didn't if it pulls really back into June May June all the way maybe to like 18 at least I didn't give all this back so that's why I, you know I'm raising my stops just because I know that this right here uh, especially in March is gonna get very toppy and if prices is not gonna push higher uranium spot pushed higher way higher but the uh, sector has stalled and I don't know about UEC uh, DNN you know all the other ones I have positions in too uh, uranium royalty uh, I can't remember right off the top of my head if they all did, are, are they're all in double top mode you know maybe all the charts are different uh, but I kinda watch CCJ because it's kinda like the uh, the standard uh, and you could probably watch URA also but 
CCJ, I feel like if, if you just work on one chart, everything kind of will like uh, follow. Everybody else will kind of follow everything else in regards to the technical analysis. And obviously, take a keep your eyes on uranium spot. Uh, the pitchfork. This is another thing you want to keep an eye on. Let's see if we could. Uh, you guys know my videos. I've used a lot of programs to do, you know, it's like tools, like a carpenter. You use, you use, you know, a hammer, special hammer, screwdrivers, uh, pliers. So these are all different tools I use. So the pitchfork, you can see that we're coming in. I have, I, I mark them from two, uh, from that first impulse and that correction. I think that's the most dominant one, the most important one within this whole move, even though it fluctuates and gets out of whack it's it it should it should follow this if it's going to be trending higher you can see that right there uh that's going to be like 23 90 24 uh that's that pitchfork right there so anything below 24 it's going to get out of it and now you widening it out from the march 18 low and it's like a funnel opening and you start you you, you adjust to it uh, you know fractal as it opens and you want to just look at the 50% uh, and that 50% is somewhere around 2559 and we already failed it so it's already below using these three points the most important one is the one that it started the first move and then the second ones are as it expands if it's above that 50 it's good you know using the, the, the geometry of it and also, you know, the SMA uh, moving average. Using the Fourier, we got we got to get a little closer here. Let's see if I could. There's a crossover coming on uh, March the 24th, so there's a lot of stuff happening, you know, towards the end of the month that I want to keep an eye on. And again, square squaring the range. So this two that I use. I used the uh, the all-time high and the March 18 low of 2020, and you can see that it's 20.34 is a level you want to watch, and also this uh, angle right here coming up, which is far away for right now. And then when you take the March um, 18 2020 low and take the November uh, eighth high and you square that range out you can see that this right here is at 2484 uh, which which was struggling trying to stay above it if we can't this would be the next level of support 2269 and then 2045 so those are the two obviously this angle right here so is there anything else I wanted to show you I think that's it so to uh, sum it up Let's go over here. Um, if it pushes lower, I'll be locking in profits and then waiting for, you know, it finds a bottom or, or you know, find support here and maybe pick some more. But I don't want to give all my gains um, up yet. And, you know, I'm, I'm still bullish, but I was hoping that it would make at least a uh, a higher high and take out 20, uh, 480, uh, 2849, 2848, um, and push higher. But that 2848, yep, and it, it hasn't happened yet. So let's see how it plays out. But I wanted to give you a quick update, and uh, I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on chemical using double EGAN, price and time, technical analysis.